Hi, my name is Siddharth Bandiala. I'm Chen Yard. Uh, we are here to talk about the course uh, called Developments in Computer Hardware, which was taught by uh, Dr. Christina Lababi at Marquette University in the spring 2014 term. Uh, it, gen it basically deals with the network concept concept. As we're going to go into it, it's made of a bunch of building blocks that you're able to compose the router that you can then use leverage to build a multi-dimension network on chip, which is an extremely hot topic in the, in the world of computing, especially as elements start getting smaller and smaller. So we're going to dove into a little bit of, of the design principles um, and, and talk about the simple building blocks that we'll be using to actually simulate a waveform in the ALDAC HDL. The basic function of the arbiter is to arbitrate between the different uh, request signals uh, uh, given, uh, you know, by the requesters over a single source uh, in, in order to access the source, so to pass the data out. Uh, the basic, uh, the arbiter generates a grand signals depending on the priority. Uh, here we can see the uh, single block of the priority generator which generates the priority depending on the grand signals given in the clock cycle, previous clock cycle by using some logic gates like the uh, AND and the NAND gates. Uh, and each, uh, the bit cell of the arbiter, it, uh, you know, is given in this picture where it uh, generates the grand signals depending on the priorities and also the requests uh, by using some AND, NAND and NOR gates. When an input unit needs to traverse the router, it actually passes the information from the virtual channels, requests the arbitration, and based on the grant signals from the switch allocator, data will be output to the, to the crossbar switch, and based on the destination address that was provided from the switch allocator, they'll assign the appropriate output port for our up downstream output. Uh, the RC unit is, uh, is just a lookup table where you know it gets a destination address of the packet from the virtual channel it looks up at the table and tells of which output port that the fa uh, packet needs to be forwarded to and uh, passes on that information the id of the output port to the vir virtual channel ec allocator uh, this is the objective of this component is to actually assign an output unit virtual channel to a requesting input unit virtual channel uh, so for our implementation, we actually implemented a single VC allocator for a router. And in order to do that, you have to feed in the states of the output unit VC, its credits, and a signal to tell it when it's released and it's actually transmitted its final flip. And then also that it's been assigned a virtual channel so that it can progress through the state uh, for out of the idle state. And then it also will receive the input port and virtual channel ID that has been assigned from this virtual channel. And this input unit virtual channel will pass in its ID, send in a request signal, and the virtual channel will actually, the virtual channel allocator will grant the virtual channel once it's been assigned based on the output unit's virtual channel availability. And then it will actually route the output unit's virtual channel credits to the input unit virtual channel credits so that it can track appropriately and then it will actually output the, the, uh, the output unit's virtual channel that's been assigned. Virtual channel of the input unit in the first case, we have four virtual channels in the input unit and each virtual channel has a state register associated to it. Uh, the different fields in the state register are the global state, the routing, the ID of the output port and the credits. Uh, and the values of the states of the different fields change according to the, you know, the process as the flit is being forwarded, as the flit is, as the transmission takes place. Uh, first, the G field, uh, when there's no packet arriving at the input unit, the state of the G field is in idle. When, when, the pa when a flit arrives, when a packet arrives, uh, the head flit contains a destination address, uh, which is sent to the routing computation unit, and the status of the uh, G field changes to R, which uh, changes to routing. When the status of the G field is in routing, uh, the virtual ch the RC unit sends back the ID of the output port, uh, the next router which need uh, to which the pack packet needs to be forwarded to, and the state of the G field then changes to V, which is waiting for the output VC. At this stage, uh, the virtual channel requests the virtual channel allocator to allocate an uh, uh, virtual channel at the output port for this particular packet, and uh, 
it gets back uh, it gets back the information from the virtual channel uh, with the id of the virtual channel at the output port once a virtual channel is allocated uh, the flits the flit is transferred i mean the flits are transferred and the status of the global state field is active while the flits are being transferred and as soon as the last flit is trans is uh, transferred that's a tail flit tail flit uh, the global state field goes back to idle and coming to the other fields that is the routing the yeah, coming to the routing field uh, when the global state field is in routing and it's as the routing computation unit for the id of the next router to which this packet needs to be forwarded to and it gets the information from the routing computation unit it stores in this particular field of the state register and uh, the out, out, id of the output port is the same it's the same case when the when the virtual channel requests a VC allocator to allocate an VC at the output port and gets back uh, the ID of the VC when a VC is allocated that the ID of that VC is stored in the in the O field of the state register and the C field that is the credits field of the state register it indicates the number of buffers that are available at the downstream uh, virtual downstream virtual channel that is allocated for this particular packet. So now that we've defined the virtual channel in the arbiter, when we're arriving, when a flit is arriving, we have two different main types of flits. We have a head flit, which would be composed of our virtual channel desired, the type of the flit, the destination address, and our payload. If it's not a head flit, we'd be expecting a body flit or a tail flit, which would have the virtual channel, the type of the flit, and the payload. It's going to arrive and using the virtual channel, select which virtual channel we, we want to route our information to and based on the stages that we would find in our global state register. Uh, as it traverses through the state machine, it would request access to the arbiter and the switch allocator, and as long as those two are granted, it will output the data on the output port. Uh, coming to the uh, virtual channels at the output port, the initial stage of the uh, global state register is idle uh, as long as it is not allocated to any particular packet that's being transferred from the input uh, port uh, as as soon as the this particular virtual channel is allocated to a packet this information uh, you know which information it gets from the virtual channel allocate, allocator uh, as soon as it's allocated to a particular uh, packet the state of the global state register uh, changes to active it remains to act it remains inactive uh, till the final flit has reached the output port and uh, coming to the second uh, field in the state register, that is the ID of the assigned input unit and the input unit virtual channel. <coughs> this field, but this field contains the ID of the input unit from which the packet is uh, arriving, and also the ID of the virtual channel at the input unit. Even this information, uh, this particular virtual, this particular uh, state register gets it from the virt uh, virtual channel allocator. And uh, coming to the third field, that's the credits field. It's just, uh, the credits field, it indicates the number of uh, buffers available at the virtual channel. That's, uh, that's downstream, I mean, that, that's the uh, input unit of the next uh, uh, The router uh, that we have designed in our project uh, has four input units and four output units. Uh, each if the data comes in through the input unit and goes out through the output unit. Uh, the basic transfer traversal of the data is in such a way that uh, the data comes into the input unit uh, it arbitrates with the switch allocator for the allocation of the output unit through which it wants to go out. The switch allocator allocates the switch and the data passes through. Now that we have all of our elements defined with the arbiter, the virtual channel, the input units, the, the input, uh, the output units, and we have defined our operation of our router, we can actually build our 2x2 two two network on chip then. So when we hit data in, it'll go through the process that we've defined in the router using the switch allocator It'll route appropriately using the uh, the R field, so the output, the desired output unit. And as we transfer information and it traverses the network, uh, we're, we've simulated the processing elements that we would normally have in a network uh, by doing them in line. So it just iterates through this this network and actually increments at each router. So we have an increment of one on the payload here, and this will also change our destination address to appropriately reroute to the next router and increment one here, here, here. So it'd actually be incrementing our payload by four and then we'd actually see the data exit 
on the input, uh, the, the output unit of router one as it's finally traversed the entire network. Now that we've described the operations of the 2x2 network on chip, I want to take a second and go through the simulation that demonstrates the different requests and grants and the components that would we we were talking about earlier in, in their in their purpose. So we start here by inserting a head flit, which we have a, we have a four flit packet that's eight bits wide. So this 13 right here demonstrates a head flit in that that basically just has the a payload with uh, the destination address of the next router, which is this was set by the inline PE that we were talking about, that processing element. So we see that it starts in the idle stage. And then once the head flit arrives, we progress to the routing, we make a request, and when we're assigned, we progress to the virtual channel allocation stage. So we request a virtual channel. And you can see here for the output port, this is this data two represents the output at the output port on our router. And that would be the output of the second uh, output output unit, which these are zero index, so it'd be you're going from left to right and you're going clockwise, it would be the third one, it'd be going east. So then we're actually assigned our virtual channel. You can see going back up here to the input unit, we request arbitration and we request um, and we're, when we're, we're granted arbitration, then we actually request switch allocation as well. You can see we're granted the same switch allocation. And this four would be would represent if you're going most significant to least significant bit, it would have the, uh, the third bit set. So this is actually requesting our output, our second output unit through the switch allocator. And you can see that it's it's being granted. And then as soon as it's granted, you can see when we're in the active stage, that head flit arrives. And we're using a uh, FIFO buffer that triggers on a clock. So you can see when we, if we line this cursor up here, this goes to the clock and it follows the clock edge. FIFO is, is read from, outputs the head flit. And you can see here it's doing the same. It's reading body flit, the, second, the first body flit, second, and the tail. And you can see that our original input was 21 for the first body flit, and now it's 22, and that's that increment that we were talking about. You can see the second input was 22, and the output is 23. So it's incrementing these uh, this payload as we progress, and you'll see the only ones that are really changing from stage to stage is, is the head flit, and that's because it has to update its destination to progress through the, the network appropriately. So we can see the data to the output on the second output unit for the first router is 13, and that's outputting. And it, as that's outputting, you see on router two, data in is going to be updated with the destination address and input on, on the second router. And the same goes through as, as you progress through the, the network, you can see the output for that router. It's coming out of, this, of the uh, first output unit now because it's going north and router 3 is having that data arrive right here. And as we progress to the, ne the next router that output is coming out and it's coming out output 0 now and that's because it's going it's going to be going west so now that's coming in on the router 4 you see that's coming in on data 2 and as that outputs, this is the last stage. I'm going to scroll up here. You can see that's clocking through. It's coming back into router 1. And as that outputs on router 1, this data traverses the network. Coming up, and we're output on that, on the actual output of our network. So as you can see, based on our discussion from the simple things such as a virtual channel and an arbiter, we can end up building multiple components that we can leverage for our entire network on chip. 
and uh, by those multiple uh, components we can build up a router which by which we can transfer the data with less latency and more efficiency over a wider area uh, depending on the requirement of the user and uh, this field definitely has more opportunities if you want to explore it uh, feel free to go to the link that we have mentioned below uh, in if you want to know more about the project that we have done or the course that we have taken. If you want a reference uh, for more information on the concepts that we discussed during this presentation, you can go check out Principles and Practices of Interconnection Networks by Daly and Towles. That's the book that we use as a main resource for this course and the concepts that we discussed.